Hello my friends, welcome back to NTDC and C North America. I'm with my buddy Andrew today. We are going to talk SW and how SW can benefit your production. Andrew, thank you so much for being a part of MTD. I'm excited to learn more about this machine. Hey, Tony, I'm excited to tell you all about it, so ask away. Let's get on this. Well, I hear from the guys and colleagues around you that you are a true expert, so let's learn more about this dual machine and its capabilities. Hey, can you give me the names of those guys? I need to talk to them. <laughs> uh, but I'll, I'll answer all I can for you. So this is uh, one of SW's kind of workhorse machines. This is a BA322, the twin spindle. It's basically a 600 millimeter machine with a twin spindle on it, so you have 300 millimeters of X on it. So in this world, when we're talking about dual spindles, right, a lot of people think, well, I can only utilize both at the same time, but you actually have spindles that work individual of themselves, and when you're working with two instead of one or even four on some of your other machines, we're really putting out a lot of production. Is that how this kind of whole system works? There's a lot of uh, different avenues to go on this. You know, first off, on the uh, twin spindle, we do synchronized spindles, which are like traditionally like a gang type spindle. But as we go into larger platforms, we get up to 400 millimeter, 600 millimeter. We can do truly independent spindles. Recently, SW just came out with a new 600 millimeter uh, machine was X, Y, and Z are fully independent as an option. And so I think that's a great option that you're able to do that. When I think of SW also, something that comes into my mind almost all the time is automotive. But you are not aut just automotive. You guys have spread into many different industries at this point. When I first came on with SW about seven years ago, that was like my biggest fear is, you know, SW is known as this traditional automotive company. And I'm like, there's more to the market. So one of the biggest challenges you know, I was faced with was how do we branch out? And over the years, we've got into you know, firearm industry, semiconductor industry. Uh, obviously, we do a lot and you know, probably still 70, 80% of our market is automotive, but it continuously grows into all these other segments right now. Anybody who has a part or a part family, uh, this is a great tool for it. So if you're doing pumps, uh, you name it, we can, we can machine it. If you're making chips, we're, we're your guy. And if I'm walking around a trade show, or if I'm on Google walking around a virtual trade show, whatever it might be, what are some of the aspects about SW that really stand out that would bring me to you and make me go, that's got to be my machine based on what I'm making? I would say probably the first thing is this load zone. You know, you, when you look at this machine, we are, you know, always the machine, you're always worried about balancing the loads, doing everything like this. And what's unique about SW is we have this work zone where we're loading, unloading the machine, so we're always, the spindles are always running. So you basically, you can have a setup where you have maybe six minutes on the first operation and three minutes on the second operation. And people are saying, oh, that's unbalanced. But unique about SW is that you're always machining. It only takes about two and a half to three seconds to, for the trunnion to flip over and bam, you're back into parts. So your operator has time to load, unload, robot 10, clean to that part, wash that part, do all these other aspects versus a traditional machine. The other thing that's unique is that ability to load and unload out that area. So whether you're using traditional overhead robot, gantry, uh, it, the machine's set up for it. And you speak of a robot, which is right behind you right now, which yep. adds to that automation. I've seen a great gantry unit that you guys have at your facility as well, which really help, helps the real estate and space that so many people are fighting for, right? Something that was brought to my attention recently, and I really, really like this analogy was, if I'm in a car and I have one person and I go to a place, or if I'm in a car and I have four people and I go to a place, we're getting there at the same time. We're just getting there with more people, or in this instance, more parts. Well, that's the great thing about SW model. And, and we do make different varieties of machines. You can get an SW in a single spindle, up to four spindles. But traditionally, we're known as a multi-spindle manufacturer. And it's great because you're getting more parts out. You're, you're paying for one part, you're getting that second one riding along for free. In a lot of cases, we do four spindles. We have probably in North America, I, I can't even count the number of four spindles that are out there. People are you know, scared by it at first, and you realize down the road, it's no different than uh, programming the first spindle. So like you said, you're getting all those free passengers. Exactly right, and I've heard that as well. Anything that's somewhat unique is has a fear factor to it, right? It but these things are adaptable. I've talked with some of your other folks, Thomas being one of them, about the software and how easy it is to learn, being you know user friendly. But I'd like to talk a little bit more about the significance of keeping that spindle turning all the time. In the world that we live in right now, where we all know and we talk about this with that skills gap. It's yep. important to be able to keep that machine spindle turning and the ability to be able to switch it so quickly and back and forth. Have you seen this become incredibly insignificant at SW as well? Well, I mean, 
you, you covered a lot of things right there. I mean, first off, I'd say if whatever you were doing yesterday will not work today, tomorrow, going forward. There's the skill gap. There's the shortage in parts, labor, and all these different issues. So yes, you have to keep those windows going. But the other thing you have to do is you got to look at the quality of that workforce. You know, it gets more and more challenging at times. And a lot of our customers are located in very remote areas. And so a lot of people say, oh, buying this multi-spindle, this is going to be, uh, you know, scary to operate and run. And then they find out this is actually set up to be very easy because one of the biggest spiels I go into is most of our customers initially are automotive. So you have this high volume, high robust situation. So you have to have effective uh, parts, you have to have effective service, and you have to have an application that's easy for people to use and run. And that's what's uh, unique about SW. It's, it's a very, how do I say, very complicated, but very simple, clean system. And you look at the German engineering that goes into this machine, the way it's laid out. Everything has a very clean design principle to it. The way the trunnion system is built, the way the Q-axis is built, all these things are basically taking thermodynamics, deformation, all that into, into consideration. And it's a unique platform. You also went over a lot of things there, which I liked. <laughs> and something I'd like to touch on, you brought up, it's a German-made product, right? When we think of German products, we almost all of us instantly think of high quality. It's just yep. that's how German's been perceived throughout the years through hard work and dedication. And it makes sense that we do that. What is... When we're talking about a machine like this, we're making two parts at a time, four parts at a time. It's constantly the spindles moving all the time, making sure our uptime is getting into those higher percentages of 70, 80, 90 percent. When we do that, we always also focus on flexibility, rigidity, precision. SW has all of those components as well, right? It does. And the unique thing is you talk about, you know, 80, 90 percent, you know, a couple weeks ago, one of the best ways we sell an SW, and when I started with SW, there was very few machines in the market here. You know, most of ours were key customers that came over from Germany, European customers. So the way we got to selling machines was taking a customer to see the machine. So then you get sold that customer and you bring another customer in. And one of the things that we just had the other week was really interesting, customers in, so what's your OE, what's your uptime? The customer looked on the machine, so we're running 97, 98%. I mean, those numbers are, out there. And so how do you do that? You have to have a rigid platform, a platform that's made for production. And this machine is set up for that production environment you know, between the, you know, the, the drum system, the Q-axis. And what SW does is unique is we take the same platform for the most part, uh, and I won't say all the time, but for the most part, you're taking it and scaling it. So our 200 millimeter machine, our 300 millimeter, our 600 millimeter machines are scaled up through that based on that design principle that works. And it's going back to using the, you know, the core fundamentals of the company that, uh, and the design that work that we know will go through to make a robust product for the customer. So, Andrew, you and I have talked a lot already in this interview about the capability of that uptime. And that 98% you said is astonishing or astounding or whatever impressive adjective it, it, it's you It's scary. Want. You know what I mean? Yeah, You're You're going. Uh, you know, a, a unique story we had uh, a couple years ago. We had a customer uh, that basically was not had not automated the machines yet. We were going in, they wanted the machines in, they wanted to learn the machines first, and then they wanted to bring the automation in. And uh, you know, all of a sudden we get this phone call after them having the machines for a month or so and said, hey, first shift's great, third shift's going great, but we're just killing the cooling cost on the second shift. And we're kind of scratching our head. You know, everyone always blames second shift or third shift. You know, <laughs> they're always the, the problem child. Well, what we found out is basically they were just going over the uh, second shift operator, went in there and shut down the feed rates on the machines and was blowing the tooling because they couldn't keep up with the machine. Obviously, now there are locks and ways to take that all out of there, but it just kind of shows you into that play of how much you know productivity you can get out of this machine. So, Sometimes you just wear the people down. <laughs> That's an amazing story. That's absolutely true. So we talk about these high production and now people even turning it down because they can't keep up. But we also, when I think of SW and other people out there, we automatically think of, we already started with automotive, but we think of high production yeah. and we, you know, everything. Are there minimums where people can consider SW as well? Because I don't want the people out there that are watching right now to only think of, well, I can't get it unless I have a million parts to run or 100,000 parts to run. How does that work as well with SW? I think one of the most unique customers we've done lately is the semiconductor industry, and it's kind of a buzzword right now. We've been in the semiconductors for probably the last two, three years, supporting them, and the volumes are very low. Uh, 
they're stainless steel parts. Uh, typically, they have a limited shelf life on them. Parts are, you know, you can put them in your hand. They're, they're, they're tiny in that aspect of it. But the, uh, you know, the mix is there. You know, they're looking at uh, doing all different types of systems. So we have customers that uh, we can take a standard base plate in there, standard fixtures, and we can run a part family. We can run a zero point clamping system, just take off that whole table, switch it over and go on. So it doesn't matter if you're making, you know, I don't want to say this is a machine that's set up for one part, but if you're making you know, a parts that have long run times, you're working for a part families, you're making hundreds or thousands of parts, this is the aspect to go. Yeah. And when we think of SW as well, and we've already talked about the dual and quad, but you have single spindles also. Yep. So if a customer out there does have a smaller batch of runs, there are an array of machines that they can look at. And by going with SW, they get the service and support and decades and decades of technology that is there built to support the customer who invests in SW. Well, I would say one of the unique things about SW is we're big, but we're not so big. So we're in the aspect that when we have a need for a new product, uh, we have continuous meetings in the company. What do we see growing? What's seeing coming out? And with that, we've had this demand for single spindle machines. It's, it's, and mostly a lot of it's because of the EV industry. We're seeing these platform parts go, uh, what used to be a 600 millimeter parts now growing up to three meters. So we have a machine that can handle parts up to almost three meters, which is called the Space 3. And this, is, this industry is, is growing. But within that, we still try to take that same design principle uh, if you have a system that you have that's work, it's a patent design system. So we try to integrate that concept. And the other thing you brought on is you're talking about parts. So by using a lot of that technology and using the same Siemens controls or we use our Fanic control systems, you, you get a, a good stock of parts in there. And you know, we use similar uh, spindle families and et cetera throughout the process. So you know, it's important that our customers are taken care of. And we do a lot of local service, you know, where all of our parts for North America come out of Michigan, but yet we have SW service people regionally located to keep those machines up and running. Yeah, perfect. And we touched on this a little bit at the beginning, but I'd like to go in a small bit more detail if it's okay with you, because another thing about SW, for the people out there who know, think of two or four spindles or I guess a single, but yeah. it doesn't really go into this, but they're all working at the same time where now you have spindles that work independently of each other as well, right? Yeah, so anything that's gonna be in the 200, 300 millimeter range, like this machine right here, the spindles are gonna be ganged. Uh, so they're gonna run together and we do all of our adjustments for the, the, the work piece itself. When we get into our larger machines, 400 millimeters and up, uh, we have a, either independent uh, Z we can do for height uh, adjustments or we can go into a uh, variable X also in the machines. Uh, as we get into the linear drive machines, which we haven't even really touched into, we have a lot more variability that can be done in the machines. But one of the important tools that go with this is having a good presetter that goes with the machines to set the tooling. And it's a lot uh, easier process than people realize. You know, if you, you run RFID tooling, for example, you have a good presetter set up, you take a lot of human error out of it. So a lot of times the operator is really not touching this, this machine. It's all being done. You have a, at the, at the presetter going from there straight over the machine, reading that tooling, you're getting all that information in spot on from the get go. Impressive, really impressive. It, it is, I mean, it's a, it's a neat way to do things. And it's, uh, you know, every day as you go into that labor struggle and I said, a lot of times the people, I said, you can buy a, a good $80,000, $100,000 presetter and not just use it for your SW. You know, take those better management practices, follow through all the rest of your shop and go through, and you'll see that productivity increase. Valid point. It I is. like that you yeah. added that. So on this BA322i, we're specifically making something today that looks like a lot of fun. Can we talk a little bit about that? Yeah, this is, uh, this is something that goes bang. You know, it's, just, uh, it's been a big demand for SW. This machine was originally kind of developed for the uh, compressor wheel industry. Uh, the 200, 300 millimeter machines were popular for turbos and turbochargers and et cetera. And one of the things that's taken off uh, for the special North America market is the firearms industry. And uh, you know, right now I would say we probably have uh, 120, 130 spindles you know, making firearms in North America. So it's, it's pretty impressive. The numbers uh, sometimes kind of make you, make you wonder. I wonder all the time, but you know, that's, that just happens to be the, the industry we're in, right? Yeah, and, and so we're doing, uh, right now, this machine here, we're doing slides in this, but we also have machines that we're uh, working on doing barrels and frames and uppers and lowers. So we have a lot of different technologies that we can bring to the firearms industry. The idea of SW and these spindles and being able to, everything we've talked about 
is absolutely implemented in what you're creating today and every other subject across the board for all the industries, right? That's correct. Yeah. Yep. What's uh, you know unique is the firearms industry has always been kind of a um, uh, slower to adapt to new technology, and where you know this was a big hard sell for a lot of people, you know, to get in this. And there's always those naysayers, don't do this, don't do this route. And a traditional firearms manufacturer will take a gun slide like we're showing today and make this in seven or eight operations. You know, we're unique about SW is we came in here and said, let's look at that. You know, we're not firearms experts, but we are machining experts. And how can we redo this process? Yeah, so you mentioned right now with this setup, you mentioned seven, eight, sometimes more, maybe a little less, but we're doing this in two operations in the moment. And that's pretty much all inclusive for a finished part put into the box, right? Yeah, correctly. I mean, we can do this in two ways. Uh, we have some customers that like to do these basically uh, hardened, so they're taking a forging and machining these. We have other customers that are taking bar stock and machining these soft and going through there. But what we're doing is we're able to open the customer up to using more types of materials, better availability materials, because that's a, a new struggle right now is finding materials on that aspect of it. And we're also looking at how can they con control their cost, because it's obviously a lot easier to get straight bar stock, cut it with a saw, feed it into the SW, and go that process. But yeah, again, you know, a lot of people, like you said, doing seven, eight operation. So we're able to do this part complete. Typically, it's going from there. We can do the broaching in the machine. We can do it external. Uh, we have customers that uh, will just take it right from here to a sanding lapping process to get the, the finish that's unique to them. Because you can build a part that is perfect, but it may not be, the, it may be too perfect. Some customers like, oh, it's a little too smooth. It's too fine of a finish. Or we need it a little rougher. So everyone has their unique feel of it. And what's unique about the firearms industry is the, the feel of the firearm you will find a lot of people buying firearms, it has to have that feel of that trigger. And that's the same thing of how the slide, everything it feels, those serrations when you grab it and you rack that slide, everyone has that unique feel of it. So you can build it to print, but you also have that, put that individual firearms manufacturer's uniqueness to it. And that's how we work with the customers to do that. I like it. Well, have you heard that saying, you had me at hello? <laughs> well, you had me at dual and quad spindle, and I'm sure the, the viewers out there watching right now are equally as excited about not just this product, but all your products. How can they best find you? What kind of socials or website? What's the best way to get in contact with SW? Well, I mean, first off, uh, we have regional sales managers, and what is unique about SW is everybody working for SW is an SW employee. We're not uh, fruit distributors and all that. So when you're talking with an SW, whether it's service, sales, whatever, you have an SW person that's out there. So we have regional sales people. We have people in the Northeast, South, uh, in Canada, Midwest. So, you know, that's the first avenue to get to you. Andrew, you have been amazing. Thank you for being so clear and concise with the information on this machine. I know it's going to benefit so many people out there right now, and I appreciate you sharing your time with MTD CNC's global audience. Well, Tony, I appreciate you coming by. Uh, we greatly appreciate your time and consideration. Thank You're you. You're a good man, here. my friend.